Hi, everyone. Welcome into episode 91 of Coffee and Shell. Myself, Tyler, and Brent's here to break down a couple weeks uh, after uh, missing last week. I was away for the All-Star Weekend, so we'll we'll break down uh, some of that stuff because I was there for the Game World Champ or the NHL 24 World Championships. We had a couple of LAN events, the first ones, uh, and uh, we have uh, the hitting. What did you call it? The hitting epidemic. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna talk about the hitting patch and then the reversal and then all of that, and uh, as well as some content. We got the new team builders that we haven't discussed, as well as uh, a free bars out that just came out the night of this recording. So, well, that's to get into. Uh, I'm gonna go first because I had the busiest weekend. I would have to assume. Uh, with the uh, trip to the All Star Game, did you guys actually? I'm going to ask you guys: Did you guys watch the skills competition at all? The skills. I did. I mean, it's like it's one of those things. It's it's on the TV, you know. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm but you had it like, on. Hardest shot. Got to watch that passing like competition. Yeah, not so much. Yeah, it's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to mess up just rifling absolute piss rockets. Like that's always going to get everyone excited. Stu, you watched it a little bit? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh my yeah, god. Oh, you what do you mean? Oh no. Oh, you gonna poo poo it, bro? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there's just some there's just some events I wish I just do away with, like the passing ones that like they You just, didn't like like the because uh, you the have to have one just seems so like I don't know. It, it's it's just like hitting the little what were those things? Like the little the, like markers. Dude, little not a, no, not all of the guys could could did it as effectively. It's funny because the defensemen weren't nasty at it's it. It's just boring compared to like the skating. And yeah. The oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you can only have the fastest skater so many so often. That was the too first bad, one. Too bad, too bad you can't have like something like fun or it's like something just outlandish that if there was no such thing as injuries, just have people just like, all right, let's see who can hit the hardest. That would be <laughs> great. That would be, that would be, I mean, fastest like a skater. Test dummy, a yeah. Test dummy where you hit it with like, who gets the most G's. No, dude. Yeah, test dummy. Hardest <laughs> shot, but the goalie's in the net. I'll still, I'll, I'll still say the best all-star game that I've seen in my lifetime was the John Scott one. That one was awesome. What, like, but like, was, what oh, made yeah. that one? What made that other than okay? It was, I understand just, it was just so it was just so cool because the way the NHL treated him, like that whole week leading up to it, and trying okay. to like banish him from the game, and that was funny. Gary, Gary was and his crazy. little paws couldn't get couldn't stop him, and he went down <laughs> there, and it was fun because like everyone tried, and they tried hard for him to win, and it was the first year of three on three. Yeah, that um, was the first it would have been a sick weekend to be in Nashville. So like, I, I that, that would have been, been true. A That's cool true. Weekend, but. That was like my literally like where I was watching the entire thing, like rooting for him. Like it was so cool. Like I felt like even though I know it's gimmicky and he shouldn't have been there, but it was cool to see like the fans get him in because we've always seen like jokes. Yeah. Who was, was, was the guy back in the day? It was there was like a Canucks defenseman they always used to vote for. Oh, to, oh my God. T Tom P Pyatt? No, no, no. Pyatt no. was a forward. There's Brian Allen or some something like that. I know okay, exactly like, your Tom. I, it's not Tom it, Pody, was it? Like, I want to say it's out of the P. Somebody. I do, John I do Scott did it. Remember they like traded him and they like they sent Dude, him. He got line. sent oh, yeah. down to the just AHL. Did whatever they could to yeah. not have him play. No, it was like it was just cool because it, it just all and the guys like on his team were like his old teammates like Burns and Pavelski and all them and they were like wanting to yeah. win. So but that was pretty cool. But anyways, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it, there's just some events I think. I think you're also without, old but. now. Back in like when we were teenagers, yeah. I think it was a little bit more. I feel the same way that like I, I remember the skills I mean, competition being like glued to the TV, watching dudes do the all the the uh, the accuracy shooting and stuff because like that was kind of fun. Uh, I think if you had money on someone, the way that it was set up, it was fantastic. Me and my dad had uh, we were in obviously in person, so uh, the All Star Game and event, the skills competition, way at least the game way better on TV. Because in person, like, the first game was kind of boring. There wasn't very much scoring, the actual all-star game. The cool thing is that they actually used the goal horns for the player, like the individual. Yeah, right, so that was, own goal yeah, horn, so that yeah. was, yeah, so that was kind of cool. But, like, man, it just wasn't – because it's hard to keep up with who's on what team, um, you know, unless you're sitting down in the lower bowl and, and all of that. So I thought that on TV it's probably a bit better. The skills competition – the only knock I think I think it's almost perfect now. Uh, the only thing I didn't like is that it went three hours. It was actually like it actually went a full three hours. The only thing I can think of is removing one of the events, but I love the elimination part. Um, I thought that was like that made it more interesting. And again, like I so I had a hundred dollar. Me and my dad each had a hundred dollars on Barzal to win at like plus eleven hundred, and I and he was leading going into the final thing until he absolutely choked 
in one of the worst, like just absolute nervous, pissed his pants moments I've seen in a hockey game. The saucer pass thing, dude. He had there was forty pucks there, and he just he couldn't get one. And I think it was because he knew he was close to a million bucks. It doesn't matter. I, I don't care how great good these guys are. You got a million dollars on the line, like you're gonna get nervous. And he had like well, all he had to do was get he either had to get first or second, and he would have won. And uh, it just like he blew through everything except for the saucer pass, and he completely fell apart. Um, it was funny that Kucherov didn't try. After the first event, when he like realized that he probably oh wasn't gonna win, and then we the got fans booed got on. so bad. It was yeah. dude, like uh, again, if you're gonna get it's the the event is not for the players, and they gave him a million dollars to incentivize the players. So now like the players get heavily rewarded. A million dollars is one tenth of these guys' contracts. They get paid a lot. Um, so like th- there's enough, and like if you're gonna if you're gonna show up to an all star game, it's for the fans, you know. So like try there. There's one event where he's doing like the figure eight skating, and then he had to do uh, I think it was like the, not the obstacle course, the puck handling one. Kind of wiped mm-hmm. out a little bit, and he just mailed it in. It was just like that. Was... He tried he in the doing game. Like a though. full crossover. It was just like yeah. sea cuts the rest of the way. Yeah. It was it was kind of ugly there, but yeah, I thought the game. I thought the skills competition was great. I don't know how you make the game any fun. I really don't like the draft. I don't like I like East first West, and I don't know how like I, I just like East first West. I think that's always going to be the best way to do it. The draft was okay, uh, other than like Michael Bublé being absolutely torched on recreational drugs, and uh, and Bieber Same was Bieber too. Yeah, Bieber, Bieber was either up too. he was either gun shy and didn't want to be like you know, when you're a, you know a singer. Obviously, you're not nervous, but like he was like the background. Like uh, he just sat on the stairs. Like it was he was either yeah just extremely intoxicated or nervous. I don't know what what it was um but no it was good the, the uh it, for my own personal thing i had an event every single day it was the busiest i've ever been at one of these i was exhausted every single night by 8 p.m uh the creator skills competition i'll have a vlog hopefully i'm gonna piece it together it was my first attempt at one so bear with me but if you follow any of the big like hockey creators on on social media you saw a lot of it but the creator skills competition was sick it was a three-on-three event there was four teams i was a coach of one it was like a figurehead thing i didn't actually coach it was just every team had a coach i got invited to that and uh, they put on like a show like zach bell and all those guys they it, it was it was really fun they had hundreds of people out there lots of kids like and everyone had a ton of media coverage the espn was there it was just done very well and i i hope they do it again in the future it was, it was probably the best part of the weekend to be honest with you so uh then we had the all-star open so let's talk about that real quick the the esports event you guys watched that or at least some of it i'm sure yeah yeah thoughts so like strange amount of blowouts there's cr- like Dude, because they were playing on the they were playing on the tuner that came before Monday, right? So like yes. they're having to get used to the no hitting. that like the, the no hitting, and those guys like dude like Cad, his the guy's forces are just unbelievable. I was watching his stream on Sunday night. The guy could put any puck through any amount of guys. It was it was ridiculous. Like he was running through because he he didn't play any hot champs this week. He wasn't playing the game, and he hops on the stream at uh, midnight Eastern. And he starts ripping through games like he is de- like people are not getting to the 10 minute mark of the first because he's just fights his force 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 everything's going through and i'm like dude i was like how does anybody beat this guy it doesn't matter how covered he- these guys are i was like i get it. i can see why guy lost 12 too well i mean like he like obviously it's it sucks for him he can't like uh quit out you can tell like, he's like, bro- like dude, dying, calling uh, it? dying internally but like dude and then you got cad pouring it on it doesn't matter like that guy can put any puck through any amount of skates it, it was those games like that that event was so brutal to call because they can't quit out and it's like how do you make a 12-2 game exciting and then guy ends up winning game two like it, it was it was wild i don't know if it's because um the hitting thing was uh, we'll talk about the, the hitting in just a little bit but it was so nerfed like from what it was you know, to, mm-hmm. to on the patch that these Going guys could hundred on the scale to zero. Yeah, these guys couldn't get the puck back. Like they they didn't know. You know what I mean? So like none of these guys could. Mm-hmm. So once the score got up, there was very there was almost no full pressure system like meter used. Like I would say it maybe happened five times total in the eight games that were played. Um, so like that's gone. For, and like that's something we should probably talk about too. Is that the fact that like it's mm-hmm. like a big feature and it's like completely nerfed maybe is it a good thing but it's just gone from the game essentially and uh these guys once i got down like there was no coming back very very brutal games in terms of like closeness 
um, in yeah. huts because they were they were using their hut teams. Um, so you know is what it is. Pogs beats up on Cad nine three in game one of the finals, and then Cad wins two in a row. Like, mm-hmm. um, I thought Pogs this was gonna be like his first like you know like big like GWC win, and he almost had it. He almost had it, but uh, well, I mean, he has bolts under his belt, right? So yeah, he's one of something. He's one of yeah, Just at GWC, he's he's just like the the twenty 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 two. He got smoked by Gren. That I really don't consider that though, because like that was uh, his first like big land. So like that's tough. Like nerves, obviously was, but he's still one of the best players, and I'm sure that he'll be back in the GWC at some point. But um, the uh, the the event was fun. Broadcast was a little uh, rough in the beginning. Um, in terms of like audio and stuff, but I hope they get cleared up uh, going into like stadium series and stuff. And I've, I'm pretty big faith they'll get that done. Um, and then we had the Leafs event, uh, so I was the host of that. So Sunday, I didn't get to chill. I literally drove from my hotel in Toronto to the Leafs event at the Red Bull Gaming Studio. You guys see that as well? Yep, watch that one as well. Stu, I know Stu did. Best location, uh, not maybe not location, but definitely the best like setup. I think like it, it was, it was just like the, the place was done really well. The Leafs put on a really good event catered. They filled it. Like it looked, I, I, I don't know if it looked like, you know, you know, sometimes when they have like a few people and like the chairs or whatever, it looks full, right? Like mm-hmm. when you saw like the crowd, like there was probably like 80, 50 to 80 people there, I would think. Um, so what so, do they do? They just like send out invitations like individually yeah. or like, yeah. Huh. So Johnny uh, at MLSC will invite, like there's like a crew of like myself included, that he'll invite to like the Raptors events and things like that from Toronto, like Terry O, uh, for example, like he always gets like the invite and a lot of local people. And then like, there's people from MLSC, like whether it be guys that work there and like their families, uh, and somebody always makes sure to fill it out. And, uh, they did a really good job. I thought that in versus, um, a lot more closer games. Um, yeah, you know, there was there's a few blowouts, blue, it, there, but there was a one blue end ser- series. I think with Deeks where they just kept going back and dude. forth with goals. Yeah, like that. That was that was nuts. Uh, did you catch? Did you catch uh, like that? Any of those series, Padre? Yeah, I watched some of it while. Uh, did you? Yeah, I watched. Any it. difference between versus and and the All Star Open that was hut that you noticed? Um, maybe like no, not really. I guess I don't know. It, the game kind of played the same. I guess I I didn't I didn't notice a huge difference. I guess yeah. Maybe, maybe, it, it wasn't bad. Like, I'll give Blue Wing props, too. First land. Uh, Deeks obviously didn't have, didn't have a great weekend. He, he got knocked out. I mean, to get getting to the both lands is impressive, especially the Leafs land, because that was one of the hardest to qualify, probably more than the GWC. Yeah. Like, so it was it, it was uh, impressive getting there. But obviously, um, when you get to the land events, like, it could be for two grand, it could be for 15. Like, you're going to be nervous, you know, especially when you're not playing at home. Like, you know, a lot of these yeah, guys you're not in your own setup. Yeah. yeah you you're can like hear me. You can hear me calling or like criticizing or talking over the, over the PA system. So like, you know, like it's, uh, it's not easy. And obviously I think that more and more experience, we've seen a lot of guys like Geimer who won the event was pretty rough for the first couple of lands that he did. They all go through this kind of thing where they're just nervous. Um, and the only person I can remember off the top of my head that like, in his first land, it really didn't matter. It was John Wayne. Like he's the only one that off the mm-hmm. top of my head, like just one events, like when he first started going, there was no like trial or maybe Stu like early, I guess early on. But those were so long ago. My bad. But yes, I guess. Well, I could imagine though, like, just hearing just like it's you're going out. down 10 two, and then all you hear is sleeves and it's a, he makes it 10 to two. And I'm like, yeah. sleeves, can you shut the fuck up? I know, please? dude. I hate calling those games. Those <laughs> like, are the worst. I get it. I'm it's losing. Funny. It's funny. I was, when I played in my first one and against Josh, like we're obviously good buddies and he was up two nothing on me, and they kept saying I was up two nothing on him. Like, Nico oh, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, yeah, Danny Padres winning. And Josh, like, I can't believe that you're winning right now. And then he kept like doing that. And then the and then the, the tide switched, and then I got up four to two. And then Josh's mood went from being like, oh, whatever, yeah. to into the screen. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, when uh, he gets he, his hat backwards and his oh, nose yeah. is touching oh, the yeah. monitor. Too. He's, like, oh, he, monitor. he's, he's the was, origin of licking monitors. That yeah, guy would man. just be like inside the monitor pretty much oh guy and welcome to the least gaming champion club bud yeah no, i got it uh and again i said this on the broadcast um you know i'll, I'll give him props because he could have forfeited his way to the land like uh he uh, junior pens couldn't play um on the on the qualifier day when it was like the final eight left to go 
And he was like, no, nah, I'll play on Wednesday. So he could have been knocked from that event and not gone in qualified. He could have, or he could have just forfeited, sorry. Um, Junior Penn said he didn't. He played him earlier, beat him 2 nothing, And uh, so you got to give him props there. And he got big land. Like, that was, that was impressive. Um, beat ranks, too. I thought, so after the patch, and I watched the All-Star Open, Rags is, we, can we all agree that he is the best NHL esports player? Like, uh, currently, the, like, of all Wayne time, Gretz, like, he's the way right now? Of, of, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, for like, sure. There's others, like, in the same realm, like, you know, that have won events and money, you know, maybe via money, like, Rain, but he's got the most land wins. And it's like, mm-hmm. this year, he doesn't stream, and he's, I think he's get he's in his last year of university. He's got a girl. He's older now, doesn't play the game nearly as much. Still grinds, though. Still grinds his hot champs every week and completes all these events. But it just feels like he's like an afterthought, kind of. Like, you know, he didn't he didn't do well at GWC last year. And it's like, okay, that's it. Now it's he's like that it's usually what happens. Like you see a lot of these guys that just, you know, they you know, even Top Shelf Cookie won in twenty nineteen, got older, out of school, got a job, and then it's like we don't we don't you know, it's just very difficult as you get older. And you um, put in so much time to be like dude, to You've been master of anything. Level. A master oh, of anything, game, you got a thousand hours, bro. Like minimum. Like game, it's just how it is. This game, I was saying this the other day. Like, uh, like, Dirt Star, one of the streamers, we kind of got like a little argument about top ten guys and stuff. And I'm like, the problem with this game is, in years past, because of how fluky this game is, there was a lot of guys that were in like that upper echelon of like one to four, probably, yeah. and then there was like five to eight. Now I feel like it's like barely like. I, like a, I would like maybe like consider barely Cad like an elite like number one. Little, yeah, like Cad, right, like Cad. And then, like, I don't, I, it's just, I don't really yeah, it's know. A mess. It, it's weird. It's a really tough way to, like, because you just saw it at the games, right? Like, the, the Reg series versus Geimer was one that stuck out to me the most. Like, Geimer probably should have won that game, too, but then it just, like, flips on a dime. Regs, you and mean. Then all, Regs like, should have won. Or, yeah, Regs, sorry. Regs should have won it, I thought. And then all of a sudden, it flips on a dime. I'm like, what What was that goal, by the way? The fourth goal? It was, like, so fluky. Did you, like... Oh, it was one of those ones where you're trying to force a cross grace, but yeah. instead it goes right between their pads. That's what I thought. It was another You know what I mean? Goal. And it's, like, it was it was one of those, like, we'll get, ones. We'll get to that in a little bit. That, yeah. That's one of my gripes of the game. But um, it's just, it's really hard to consistently uh be when? the good players and there's not like a there's not like a guy that stands out here and there because i feel like the game's so random right now that mm-hmm. the skill gap is is shorter than ever there's so much randomness um yeah so i i don't know it's uh it's a, i think it's the toughest year to kind of gauge for who, sure like, the upper tier guys are so regs he makes the leafs land again one of the hardest events to qualify for like it'll be easily the hardest club championship to win just because of the qualifier and then um it's probably harder than GWC just because of, again, like the gauntlet to get there. But um, he gets there, and after watching the All-Star Open, I was like, man, no one can hit, like, well against, like, the guys that are so good at holding onto the puck. Like, better, like these guys all know how to hold onto the puck for forever because that's really always been what separates, you know, the time on attack on almost everyone. Rags' his thing for, like, the last four years is, like, he's just better than holding onto the puck, and he finds a one-timer. One-timers are gone, yeah. and he just found a way to, like, adapt. In 23, he was his worst year, and that was because one-timers are gone. And right. um, well, Yeah, he was elite of the Ben Ross style. Of oh, game, yeah. Where it's just, like, the and they think about, too, like, um, like Josh, like, f- like fell off a cliff as soon mm-hmm. as the meta switched off of one tease. Yep. Like, immediately. And I fell off a freaking cliff, too. It took me forever to freaking adapt. And even, like, I still feel like there's days where I have, like, I have no idea what mm-hmm. I'm doing. But so Regs gets the Leafs land, and the first game he beats Geimer, and I'm like, oh my god, dude, there's no like he's back because the game, the way that the patch hit, I was like, dude, there's no way anyone's gonna knock the puck off Regs. He's gonna, I think he had like 19 minutes to like seven in game one. I was like, there's like nothing they can do. Like, and I said it over the thing, and I don't know if Geimer can hear me or he just acknowledged he's a great player. But I was like, man, he has to offense, he has to ozone reg. He has to play when he gets the offensive zone chance. If it's not a guaranteed goal, he has to hold on to the puck because if Regs gets it back, you're just, he's never getting it back. And sort of that's that's what he did in game two, and that's how he ended up doing in game three as well. You get a little luck, I think, you know, and sometimes you need that, especially at NHL. And um, you know, he's able to beat Regs. He's able to beat Regs, which is which is no easy task. And uh, and then he beats Blue in the final. So again, props to him. Um, I, I am so. Great, great weekend, esports. Good kickoff. Uh, I've got to go back to New York. I've got to go to New York in in like nine days for like another four day thing for the, for an event there. Excited about that. I I gotta be honest, man. 
I, I miss my kiddo. Like it's weird going away now. I don't know if you guys feel the same when you leave. It's just like, ah, you know, you, it's not as like exciting being away. Although I'm sure in like six more months, it'll be like, man, I can't wait to get away. It's not there yet. I FaceTimed my little guy and it was like, I just like, ah, I didn't want to be away. So I have like a 48 hour threshold before I'm like, yeah. ah, I miss my kids. Yeah. Like the first day is sweet. Cause they're like, oh, oh bro. That first night in the hotel. Gone. Yeah. First night in the hotel. So I kicked nice. off my feet. My dad's like, we, we went to the NHL after party. Um, and dude, it was like this crazy, like uh, convention center. There was 2000 people there after the skills competition. Like it was up to free food and drinks and it was nuts. Um, so, but I like stayed, we stayed for two drinks and then I was like, pops, I got to get out of here. It was like midnight. I was like, I got to get out of here. I'm dead. I had that event in the morning and, um, I get back there and, uh, I literally hit the bed. I'm like, dude, no kids queen bed. I just, like, ah, and then I was like, okay, now nah, I just want to see my kids. So, um, yeah, so hey, eSports is back. Come back home Monday. Tweet hits. Uh, or come back home Sunday night. Tweet hits. And we're fixing hitting. Uh, which is so funny because the patch that came out on the Thursday or Friday, hitting was one line in it. And you didn't even think it did anything to hitting. Because you, you, you know, you've been talking with devs, Stu, that, uh, that hitting is going to be addressed in this patch. And it was literally just one line that they took away the acceleration of hits um, the animations going into hits and it was just one throw in line and then the rest of it's all goalies and the hustle stuff and you even asked like is hitting being addressed in this patch right yep no i uh i thought just talking to them i i thought so my my, my whole thing is all year long i thought the hitting and, and i think it once again is too much the mm -hmm. issue is is i made the the like the comparison of like kale mccarr should not be able to hit like scott stevens and mm -hmm. also fly around like be like the most op guy like chara shouldn't should be able to hit but he shouldn't be able to turn on a dime and he is like there's just too many different weird variances in the game where there's really like no pros and cons of using certain guys and the way the game plays right now i mean you can have a Maca or any small guy i use ryan o'reilly's example the ryan o'reilly defenseman card um i had like a breakaway the other day and he just took his arm and like pushed me in the back mm -hmm. like that and i just stumble and tumble over and, it, and it's it's just ridiculous like the game has played essentially like an arcade mode game. Like when you go play Hot Rush, if you guys ever play Hot Rush in the arcade, you can just run around and hit endless, endless moments, or moments, anything, right? Like it, it's, it's not ridiculous. that bad, but it's it's close. And uh, I just think it's too much. I I I personally like like the tuner at like in terms of I thought this was gonna be tune it back. I didn't know it was gonna be no hitting. Um, clearly, uh. I would have liked a 20% buff to, or, you know, to that. I think then it would have been in a good spot, like a middle ground. The problem is they went from like 120 to zero to back up to 120 again. And the scary part about it is if you guys remember this, uh, during that little week stretch, they had that endurance type of getting rid of straight lining patch also and affecting energy along with the, it was in the same patch as the pressure system or whatever. Yeah. Now, when you get hit with McDavid, now so now hitting's back up, right? But the problem is the difference that it was before is now when you get hit, you are done, like done, done, like your energy is zapped. And with how much hitting there is in a game, it's it's a mess. And I've talked to some of the devs about it, and you know they basically just said, well, it's hard with HUD, and you know the mo you know the overall is going up and down. But things like I played a versus game the other day with Avez and there were 75 hits in the game between us two. That's like crazy. And that's versus, um, the, the main issue is, and then I'll let you guys get to it. Like what you guys think. I think the main issue is it, it wasn't in the game last year, right? Well, what did they add this year? They added total control, which I thought was unnecessary since day one, you have a skill stick, you have high, well, they, they re-added hybrid because people complained. And then you had 94 controls, correct? I think yep. those are the three. Yep. Yep. So there, there was really no need for total control. I don't know what the need of, other than just, I guess, letting people do Michigan's and hip check at what, whatever crazy amounts of hip checks. Um, appeal to your the, casuals, basically, so they can kind of do Not the, even casuals, fancy, like a, appealing to like brand new players to the game. Okay, right. so, so then when they added the down up hitting, that's when I think it screwed with everything. And oh, I'm being yeah. told... I'm mm -hmm. being told that it's affecting presentation, audio, and visual issues. I mean, I don't have my audio on ever. I haven't had it on since, like, I started streaming pretty much. So I, I don't know. But you know that sound that sounds like a car wreck when you hit somebody? I think that's the problem is something's funky with that, apparently. 
don't know what it is. I didn't have a time to test it or turn on my volume to figure it out. Um, that caused that issue. There were some other, basically, I guess the hitting caused issues. And before, like what I'm trying to say is when you go down and up to hit, that's the new way to hit this year. Last year, you just go up and it was fine. I think this new hitting, and I was told like by one of those, it doesn't, it wasn't packing the same punch as the word he used. And that's what I really think the main thing is, is every hit is just boom. And it's every single hit, no matter who you're hitting with. And I think that's the main issue is that when the patch, the tuner came out, there was no boom, there was no punch. And there was no of that like, magnetic feature when you hit somebody. So I would have personally liked the patch that they had this past weekend before they tuned it, the no hitting patch, but I would have liked a buff to it. I think Brent and I have like talked off camera. I think you kind of agree with me that it was obviously far too much, but yeah. Yeah. Well, my whole opinion on the, on it is that, yeah, yeah. There's right now, like in the current now, like, like old tuner, now current tuner is that the hitting is too strong. And that they basically need to find a way to keep hitting, being able to make it so that you could knock guys off the puck without getting the speed boost. Now, and when they had the old patch we had like in Hot Champs on the weekend, I, I was complaining the entire Champs run because if you just wanted to keep the puck, you could not get the puck away from a guy unless he, if he was always owning you, you pretty much couldn't do anything. And like to me, it was, it was just like to me, that style was absolutely miserable. Like it, you had to hit on the rush somewhere as opposed to being able to yeah. hit the defensive zone. Oh, well, I couldn't do anything. If the guy was like, there was one guy I was playing against who like was basically built for that patch where he was super passive. Uh, he'd just sit there and wait and wait and wait and didn't matter. It could be like three in real life minutes before he'd attack my net. And I was like, just, I was bored. It was, I personally, I didn't like it. Like, I don't think that um, the current patch right now is the right um, is as people are saying, oh, Papa, you know, he, him and his crying, and now they went and reverted it because of people like him. And I'm like, I don't want it to be a hundred out of a hundred. I want it to be somewhere in the middle where everybody can be happy because there's yeah. guys that love the hitting. There's guys that like are happy with a more like sim based game. But there's it, in order to make everyone happy, they just need to find a sweet spot in the middle and. The other thing I was saying, too, is I would rather there be hitting in the game right now while they fix this rather than there be no hitting while they try and fix this. So I would rather them go back to like I'd rather them go back to the current tune that they're on right now. Figure it out and then release a patch. I'm glad they went back and they're like, OK, now we're going to figure it out instead of just like uh, I was like just snooze fast, like playing like last week. And I, I don't know, like I enjoy hitting. It makes it fun, like in my opinion. It's arcadey, yes. Is it be is it better gameplay? That's subjective to me, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, we need to find. There needs to be a way for them to find something in the middle, and they, I don't know. Let's let's, let's see what they can come up with in the next month here. Unfortunately, it's during GWC, but I, don't know, I try I try to like shy away from the perspective of, being, of like thinking GWC mm -hmm. because that's such a small <laughs> niche group of people, I'm, right? I'm infecting I, like, you. I don't really. It's like I shouldn't be thinking about that mm -hmm. and i don't really it doesn't really matter to me anymore i don't really care i just want them to end up fixing the game i don't care if it comes in come like, like during gwc finals i don't i don't give i don't care just I, I would like for them to be able at least going in like for the second half of the calendar year of the game to like have it play properly no yeah, and it, before you go real quick yeah, the yeah. thing that i have an issue with the hitting is it also affects it it lessens the skill gap and it also affects offense more in my opinion because all you do is clinch your butt cheeks every time you walk, you try to go into the offensive zone because you're like, okay, what torpedo's coming at me this time? What, mm -hmm. Oh, dodge that one. Oh, oh crap, dodge that. Oh, boom, got clipped, done. And that's the problem. It's just, it's so scary going into the O zone. I don't know what way to combat this in the meantime. Like, I don't know if UF really does anything. I don't, I don't believe it does that much. No. Um, I just, it's, it's like scary. I, I don't know, I don't know how to like, it's just hard to dodge stuff. The, the, you had the to player move. Builds. You had to move the puck along. Okay. You know well, I mean? well, while we wait for this, the, them to actually fix it and find somewhere in the middle, would you rather you be more rewarded by skill zoning or more rewarded by aggressive play? I'd yeah, I was be I aggressive wasn't really, right now. I'd rather really be rewarded by playing aggressive right now. I really wasn't skill zoning though. That's the thing. Like some people might have been, but I, I was just more going for more poke checks, and I was just trying to like tell my I brain can't like. Poke that's a certain I know. Thing. I mean, it, it, it is broken too. I agree. Like that, it, you would get the puck right back sometimes. Like it was Server, faster. I get yeah. what you're saying. It's just, um, I was trying to make like my brain think more. Like, okay, play more 
like go for the poke, you know, body positioning rather than just like, all right, let's run at them. All right, let's run. I mean, it's, it's like you're just sending the troops like every time they come in your zone. And I get it. Like in the meantime, it's fine. I have the worry from what it seems like is I don't know if we're going to get the hitting mess with ever again this year. Like, I think we might. I don't be... think we will. I think a bigger yeah. issue is that this is all being done at a later stage in hut like like world of chell is different and i saw a ton of comments in my own section or my own my own youtube channel and and on um and on twitter um that the patch like if you played threes you could not hit anyone and i part of me thinks that that's that what led to them to revert it so quickly because it was literally changed in three days and i don't know how revert, revert ever yeah, it was it was definitely the fastest one, and like so, I think it was World of Chell mostly. That's just my guess because I saw so much of it on my Instagram and everywhere. It was all just three, and I don't play. None of us really play World of Chell, so um, I could definitely see that in three on three. Like if you if you couldn't get hit, um, but I I agree with you guys. I think there's a middle ground to be had. I don't think it's right. The, the, the big issue though with Hut is that because we don't have a build system. And we have a progression system where every attribute goes up. Messing with Hut halfway throughout the year, it doesn't matter. Them fixing or attempting to fix goalies in February when everyone has 99 shooting is pointless. Because it might not, when you go back to launch of the game, let's say they don't touch goalies for the rest of the year, and they go into launch of the game, and now they've buffed light work and all these other abilities, right? They buffed them all, the goaltenders that are smaller, they're trying to make them more usable. Dude, I bet you any money that come the launch of the game in NHL 25, if they don't touch goaltenders, that what's going to happen is everyone's going to get base cards and no one is going to be able to score a goal at all because mm-hmm. they've messed with it when everyone's got 99 shooting. So they're trying to improve save percentages when goaltenders are capped at like 90 overall, right? Because they're in line with progression, but everyone's shot is 99. Like if we go and look at almost every forward card that's half decent with synergies, they're all 99. So it really doesn't matter. So they're trying to fix things. Same with body checking. There's a lot, almost everyone's body checking is in the high 90s. So now when you've nerfed it into oblivion and at 99 you can't knock people off and then you go back and revert it to what it was three days ago or a little while ago you're at a situation now where everyone is 99 body checking and it's insanely easy to body check which is why that this is they have gone against this grain for two years now the attempt to make every gameplay linear across world of shell hut and offline is not you read my mind feasible it is it thing. is they need to just abandon this like this is a it's funny because they everything tried. else you guys tried you guys tried it is, everything it else they've work. done they are willing to be like i'm gonna take the l on that and be like mm-hmm. okay presentation they didn't you know didn't hit they went back to doing this you know the 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 lack of like the crazy presentation right full pressure okay that wasn't a big hit they removed it almost out of the game it activates i don't know how many times you've seen it like i just played a couple you rivals to games be today absolutely just pounding them pounding which is, somebody which is okay like that's acceptable but if that's like one of your main features it's no longer a main feature in the game it, it just simply isn't and it's like Okay, um, so, so if you're willing to do that, but you're not willing to make gameplay have individual tuners and settings for the modes that you've got separated, then uh, you know we're, we're going to be fighting this all the time. It's because World of Chell is static all year long. It stays. Here are your builds. Your overall stay. This is what it is. Franchise mode, same situation. It doesn't get to a point where everyone in franchise mode has 99 shooting in offline or 99. What McDavid does uh, offline, but that's it. Like your third line grinders don't. So everything kind of balances out. Hut, everyone has max shooting, hitting, skating, and it does not work throughout until we go to a build system. And I like. It's just one thing. If this is more, uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk about this now, but I'll say this. But so that is something that I think dramatically needs to uh, be addressed is that they need to go back to the prior regimes. Every game plays different. So, World of Shell's development team, they work on World of Shell. Hut's development team and gameplay, they work on, on, on 1v1. And like that's just, it's worked for 15 years or 10 years. I get their attempt. They wanted to be like, hey, we have a limited pool of gameplay developers. Let's all work together so that when one thing's changed, it changes everywhere. So everyone's working together. It just simply doesn't work like it, from, from my standpoint. I don't think that you're ever going to get to a situation where it works uniform across the board and then you end up well, having to revert back and, patches. And if, and if we're worried about time being wasted, I mean, not to be harsh, but it's like we kind of wasted all this year on... Uh, That's becoming pressure, a... The pressure system. 
we wasted all year or all a lot of the dev team probably wasted a lot of time on those celebrations you know what i mean like i was making jokes about the guy like riding the horse and the the two guys are at their desk kind of like laughing at each other and in, in that video that they released and it's you know i mean it's like now we're we're reverting that back now we're selling the old way which is kind of the old way it's not really the old way but it kind of is and you know, it's just stuff that's like if it ain't broke and no one's complaining about it, don't fix it. I like the idea yeah. of the pressure system, but what bugged me about the pressure system, I don't know if you guys, I talked to you about this, Sleazy. Um, we said, like, I would have exhausted more options with the pressure system before I just was like, like, it's gone. Like, why not have it so the goalie covers the puck and it and, it, and you and you zap it? You know what I mean? In real mm-hmm. life, hockey, that's a, that they didn't even try that. And the thing that's is, true. I was also saying this is Sleazy. I, I How many ask times that. in a in an NHL game or just whatever, like an NHL game, like where you're really like, holy crap, they're hemmed in where it's like the pressure is all, you know what I mean? Like how many times can you like watch a game and you're like, a couple times, it probably happens yeah, maybe, yeah. A couple, yeah. maybe, maybe five times. Max. But that's maybe, what's yeah, happening. That's what's happening now is that we're just not seeing mm-hmm. it. The problem is, is that in a 60 minute game, like hockey is boring. It's certain parts. There's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not saying that like overall the sport is not boring. It's the most exciting sport. Chip chase. But man, there is a lot. Yeah. If you were, if you were to watch a game, there is a solid 50% of it. You won't remember at all. Five minutes after it's done. There's a lot of boring end to end that just doesn't happen. And then you get those right. moments. But in, in a video game, because of how fast it goes, there's not a lot of that, right? Like there's, you know, it's so yeah, like I, I agree. I think that there are some things that the full pressure system, needs to be tweaked at it's not something i should think should be removed because if it's removed like it is now like i i said this earlier in discord i was like this is the the what's happening with the stuff that's being worked on and developed and put into the game as main features not even not even back of the box just like the main things that they're implementing it's like wasting a second overall pick you've now wasted a year and that's that Mm -hmm. that's tough you know but we also want new stuff and we want different things, so you can't be mad that they're trying new stuff. It's just like we need something to hit. We currently are the Arizona Coyotes. We're drafting high every year, and it's just not working. You know, we need we need a Connor McDavid or like a you know like a, a Victor Hedman, like a banger pull at the top, where well, one of these things sticks and it hits. And if you're gonna spend this much time on it, then like the gameplay, right? This last this past year, not this year. They were like, we're going to overhaul it all. We're going to have all these, you know, it's going to be uniform gameplay. We're going to have the new goalies. We're going to have this, this, and this, and this. And the gameplay last year was awful, right? Everyone agreed. That was a that. throw in. That was a, yeah, throw in right. last and, year, yeah. It's like, yes. okay, so, so let's baby steps, right? Like, let's, let's start building back up the gameplay. Like, let's focus on that. Like, I think we all agree if they would have focused on gameplay, and I like, I, I know what you, I'm, you're saying, Sleaze, so people want new features too, but it's like, I think everyone would be just happy with like what's work on the gameplay. And you know what? I'll give them credit. They've done patches this year. They did none last year, but it, it's just, we're at the point now where we're, we're in February and we're, I'm just kind of lost at, I guess, the direction of the game. Let, and yeah. I, I, I was sending the, one of the devs messages today and I'm just kind of like, wh- where are we going with this? I know me, Brent, even you sleazy. Like we make up the small majority that, that play competitively, whether it's GWC trying to do well in champs, trying to do well in rivals, whatever. That's still playing competitively. And then there's the people that are just like, woohoo, I'm just playing the game and I'm having fun and I don't care. And that's fine. And that's the main people probably and the majority of the people, casual people, my friends that play it just for fun. But what are we going for? Are we going for more simulation or more arcadey? And me and you have been talking about this past few weeks. Um, I mean, I'll let you explain the 94 documentary and kind of maybe, oh, yeah. maybe that's kind of like, thinking behind it because you know that's that makes the money and that makes the consumer happy so i don't know i'll let you kind of yeah there was a the 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 nh theory yeah it's a thing yeah this is just a comment that someone in my discord had kind of noted that so if you watch the nhl 94 documentary it's um it's on youtube just type in nhl 94 documentary it's a youtube channel that put together this comprehensive like gaming uh, documentary on NHL 94 and then, um, you know, 30 years of making the game. And they interviewed Mike and Chris at the end of it about NHL 24. And there was like a little line near the end where Mike was explaining that, you know, in NHL 94, like it was very, the, the game was very accessible and it played 
close to what the real thing was for the time of what you could do on a Super Nintendo, right? Like, um, obviously it doesn't look anything realistic or anything like that, but like there was hitting, there was shooting, there was skating and all that, but it was very accessible. You just picked it up and played and that we got to a point where the controller on a PlayStation 5 is like so much more advanced than it was like when you played Super Nintendo. And it was like, you know, we've got to try and find a way to make it more accessible and, and make it a little bit easier for players. And that's we the reason why that one line stands out is because that's really what we've seen in NHL 24. Total Controls is legitimately meant for the average, like the, I'm not even saying the average player. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the, the person that picks up Hut for the first time and plays, you know, maybe 20 hours of it. Perfect example. You're in Vegas playing with NHLers who don't touch the game. And what does Robert Thomas do? He hits a Michigan multiple oh, times. Oh, exactly. Yeah. What I did immediately to him. Yeah. Hitting a button. Hitting a button. Yeah. And that's like I said, they want they want the consumer. And I get that. If I'm thinking business, right? You want to be able to just pick it up, play, yeah. have fun. And what do people want to do in a video game, Brent? They don't want to poke check. They want to rock people. And yeah. they want to rock mm-hmm. people. And they want to fight and they want to do fun stuff. They want to see guys going over the boards. They want to see. And what have we seen this year for the first time ever? And well, not first time ever. Sorry. They, they reintroduce things, but they're going over the boards again. You know, the glass is getting broke. I mean, it's, it's fun, right? Yeah. You know, the celebrations, the light turning off. So yeah, it's, it definitely seems like it's skewing you know, that way. Right. And, and that's fine. That's like, yeah, it's fine. It's just like, I, I, I have just no like problem either, with that. either lean into it or, don't you know what i mean if that makes sense like you i don't know if we can have the best of both worlds i really don't i, don't. I don't know i've said possible. this i've said this number of times on the podcast and just on my streams is that like you would any the nhl video game in terms of gameplay will never be universally liked even 80 percent, because people either like it playing like the real thing which is frustrating at the high end because hockey is a very random sport and in a video game when you're playing the more competitive you get and the higher you get in division you want less unpredictability you don't want to lose because some guy shot off a bar hit the hit your stick banged off a shin pad and ended up in the net that's real hockey like sometimes that happens in a video game you want ones and zeros you set up it takes forever to get these plays to together and you get a one timer that is just like bang on you know it's gonna go in and it doesn't it's like that's frustrating because it's ones and zeros right and that's the difference between like you know completely sim based towards hockey and the video game and there's a middle ground where they try to hit and in hockey it's just very difficult mlb it's like dude all you gotta do is put the pci on the ball and like stop making you know right. mlb is a ones and zeros game it it's just, yes MLB. it just is MLB. yes baseball yes. is a one and zero sport mm-hmm. yeah it's very very unlikely and and, and madden personally yeah, yeah. I, I want a ones and zeros game like to me if i like That's, in the yes. old ben ross games if i were to get like a high danger one timer my expectation is you made a mistake and you should get punished for it. Not me getting punished for like, like going over and over again, or me walking yeah. your slot and it's glove blocker, glove blocker. And then all of a sudden they walk in flick up doing like a worse quality shot. And it's like Swiss cheese goes in my net. And I'm, I'm like, it's, it's, I, I think in general, what people define as like liking or disliking a game is annoying RNG. Whereas like agree, games like yeah. the older games like NHL 20 did not have a lot of annoying RNG, almost none, which is why it's universally like considered to be a good game. 21 was a, a lot of glitch goals, weird, but like a you, lot of glitch separated goals, but the ones base. and zeros. Yeah. It was ones and zeros because if you were able to hit your glitch goals or you were able to defend them, then I, I personally like that game because like 21 was my I, best like, game. 20, 20, <laughs> I, I love 21 as a game personally. I, I understand why people don't didn't like it because yeah. there's so many glitch goals. There's a lot. Yeah. 22. I was good at it because that game was all ones and zeros. That game was all hunting for a one timer. It was like playing like there was no there was no glitch goals. So basically, you had to be able to find ways to score properly in that game. There was like like two glitch goals in that game in total, and then it was and then you have twenty three, which I mean there was it, it was a mess, but. Like you could find ways to score in that game like pretty consistently, and there's ways to defend those like. To an extent, I, I still did not like the game. I thought the game was like, it was like poorly made. But 24, I feel like I have the least amount of control over my result than any other year that I can remember. Yeah, no, like I, I, I agree. And I think it's like... 
it's like the interference too like that ozone interference like there's like i didn't think 24 was that far off in terms of being a good game an issue an issue i actually liked it your offensive zone ai frustrates the hell out of me the fact they don't move oh yeah oh yeah that kills any sort of strategy and that's there's there's already so limited strategy because it's been the same three you know settings for for how in the way all the time but the problem is they don't move like you're defensively the players will defend and tie up and and knock off your ai right but offensively when you get stuck like in the overload your three guys on the boards two guys in the middle they do not move and they do not fight to get Mm -hmm. open and you can only control well, the puck carrier. So it's like, like you, know, you need a little assistance yeah. here. Like, it just, yeah. 100%. Well, I like, think about it this way. I think that there's three main issues with 24 in terms of the gameplay. Like, number one, I felt was the Ozone AI not not cutting and stuff like that. Like, in mm-hmm. 23, there was a bunch of stuff you could do to Saucer to the middle. manipulate. But you could figure out there's ways to set up plays with your AI to get, like, get them to the net. There's um, the offensive like the the penalties were a problem i think they addressed most of the problem like boarding is no longer was no longer a problem um them t- tuning uh your ai penalties all the way down to one out of a hundred great great move love that barely it doesn't really happen that much anymore like when I it was at like five it, yeah. out of a hundred it still happened like once in a while it's still just kind of like make fun of it. Like, oh yeah, here we go like greatly reduced here we are on a five on three with two ai penalties but at one out of a hundred i'll accept it it's fine it happens like maybe once every few games now that's that's i can live with that and then the third thing too is um i would say like the hitting has got to be like just but it, that's going to take like another I think it's going to take the 25. It, it's, it's funny because yeah, like... If those three things, then I think the, the, the game's not bad. Can I, can I add a fourth one real quick? The goalies. Ever since oh, last year... Still laying goalies. down. It's goalies. still laying this, down. This, this, yeah. this is my yeah. It's not nearly Sorry. as bad as 23, but it's real bad still. No, so in 23, yeah. for people that don't know, they made goalies have user save animations, which adds more... That was more, a back-of-the-box feature, too. Like which adds detail. more, like, you know, like... You would think in theory, like, okay, he's going to have, like, more range of motion. He can, he's going to do more crazy saves. And the problem is the easiest things, the goalie started messing up. So, like, I get scored on all the time by people passing the puck in that. Last year, there was a glitch goal that Ava used to do all the time where he would literally pass the puck into the net over and over again. Talking about Geimer scoring on regs, he passed the puck in the net a few times on him. It's people are trying to force cross creases, and it just goes right through the goalie's legs. And I've been told by one of them that... They cannot figure out how to stop the passes and then also just the little pucks falling right, around man. the goal mm-hmm. like, and not knowing how to cover it, knocking it into their net, kicking in the net. And those make me want to scream being a goalie, for one, because it's the easiest things to stop. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, they got to fix the, just go back to the initial 22 goalies. Seriously, just yep. go mm-hmm. back to them. They're dumber. They're not as, you know, they don't do crazy yeah, stuff. Give they us were, our one timers back. Get, yeah, I had a guy today. I had a guy today try nice. a two try to do a pass on a one timer on a two on zero, and I literally laughed before he passed. <laughs> and I was like, "What a silly goose!" Mm-hmm. He tried a one timer on a two on zero. <laughs> That's no. not going in. Well, same, with, same with this year with uh, breakaways. If you go to your forehand, it's a save every time. You go to your mm-hmm. backhand, it's a goal every it's time you do it properly. Yep. I would, I would, one hundred percent bring back our NHL two twenty two goalies where that would those were ones and zeros goalies. Where like if you got a high danger chance on them, your chances it wasn't a hundred percent, but it was greater than fifty. If you have like a backdoor one timer in any like division of hockey, that's gonna go in a lot. Oh, yeah. Whereas in this game, they're not only making desperation saves; they're just so they're like there and a center mass every time almost. You, you want to know like my my theory on the people that don't like? Um, so I, we just talked about when you get an online play, there's you want the ones and zeros. But the people that don't want it for the most part, like, and and uh, it's such a blanket term, but I think what would really address things is if the people that don't enjoy the ones and zeros more and they want, like, that traditional randomness in hockey and you don't, let, let's say it like this, the people that don't get frustrated with losing in 1v1. If you are someone that, if you lose a game of hut and it doesn't really bother you, it's whatever, then this is, this is I think that you fall into this category. I think that... Um, and they want like a, the randomness, right, of real hockey as opposed to which it sounds so stupid to say because I don't think that the game when it's not like hockey is what we want. But like it again, the ones and zeros. Based, yeah, basically. yeah. So I think if you made offline hut, the, the the real problem is that the offline player, if they want to play, 
They have to play rivals because there is nothing else to do. You can play moments in squad battles, but good God, if you can only do that and you're playing it a ton, I, I don't like you're a different breed and I'm happy that you're happy. But a lot of these players are like, okay, I need to do something else as well because this is so boring. I want to play, I'll play rivals, right? If they made squad battles like that franchise mode idea that I've come up with a couple of times and it's like exciting and good to fun to play, then that can be more not ones and zeros, like traditional hockey, like where it's kind of hard and you've got to take shots and like you're looking for the randomness and all of that. Whereas like online, it's tuned to be more like a com competitive game of, of, of Chell. And I think that's how you fix that because, yeah, what's happening now, the people that complain a lot about like, you know, the... Everyone calls one timers glitch goals, which drives me nuts because not. it drives me nuts because a glitch goal is the glitch wrap. It is something that is done mechanically in the game that is not in real hockey, right? You want to know what my definition of a glitch goal is? Is when curve you can shot create a, when you can create a goalie to do the same yes. animation. You're manipulating every the goalie single time. Yes. So like I use the goal line shot this year as an example. If I'm facing like you guys are the like the front of the ice, when the if the shooter's coming over here to my left, in real life, I'm gonna be turning that way. I'm not gonna turn this way yeah. and go like this every time like I'm stabbing at it and it's going over my neck. That's what I mean mm -hmm. by a glitch. Come you out from the creating... corner and the goalie yeah. goes down to this a po check, lays down. Yeah. That's yeah, like that's, that's a glitch. Like that is it's that making is making the goalie do something every single time which is causing a it, it's it's a glitch like it's, that's mm -hmm. why he's he's glitched into doing that he's glitched into doing like that's what i always thought of one timers are so frustrating for a majority of the player bases because the skill gap was holding onto the puck and getting the and getting the one timer open like and, and people that got better at the game you see the separation and the ability to build regs if you watch regs from nhl 20 to 22 it was absurd because he would only go for a one timer and you knew it was coming every single time and he was such an alien at being able to find a way to get it open is why he was the, is the best ever it, it, he just did it better than everyone else his ability to read what handedness certain ai were like it was absurd but like the reason why i think a lot of player base didn't like it is because it was it's hard to defend but it would that goes in in real life that is a real life goal. Even the goal line goal this year, where you come around the net on the forehand and you fire it, snipe it upstairs, it frustrates me because you can do it almost every time, or you can do it quite often. But that's a real goal, and a lot of people were like, "Well, so is the glitch wrap." You see a wrap once every, I don't even know. Yeah. Like you know, if you dump it in hard side and the goalie reads the other way and you come in quickly, like yes, that is a time in which the wrap should work. Last year it was like, dude, the goalie could literally be looking at you and you would go around and do it. He just could not put his pad down because all of the human animation. Yeah, just automatically say. go in. Yeah. And that's not to say I want like every single one timer to go in, but good lord, some no. should. Like if you take a two one zero, yeah, if you take a two one zero. And I want you to send me clips of you scoring a two on zero and a one timer, because I bet you you it, it's just hilarious how yeah, often you gotta have gold get. one T on. <laughs> you have to have gold one T, yeah, or silver, even something. You need something, or the goalie's out of gas. But if it's a two on zero and the goalie's got full energy, dude, you're not scoring on that, and it's so no. comical because you like go forehand, backhand, because that goes in every time. A two on zero is way harder to defend. A two on one and a two on zero is harder to defend in most cases than a breakaway, because like no matter what you can't get over fast enough like it's just it, you know it's not so you know like and, and that's the reason why i think that gameplay no matter what it will never be universally enjoyed it just won't be because there'll be players that like one side and players that like the other and it will never Literally be shown by this weekend where you have everyone complaining about like they like say i can't hit anymore versus now everyone oh, they reddit? everyone else complaining now like reddit is i would love to see i would love to right see now. a friday night saturday morning screenshot of reddit and a monday morning after the patch afternoon screenshot of reddit and it would be hilarious to see and i understand because they went zero to 100 and they reverted it right back so that was it, it's wild and um you know i think the one thing last thing i want to talk about real quick about about this hitting and the in the direction of the game is mike had said and chris had both said that 23 they didn't say this but 23 was clearly a burn year because they had just come on late in 22 or early in 22 and it was their first year and they really were just trying to get the team together and figure out a vision. And then they're, they, they, because it's a smaller dev team that they operate in three-year windows. 
And this is essentially year one of that window, which makes sense because of all the new stuff they added in and then all of the tuning because it's their baby. They didn't do anything in 23 because that's not stuff they did. They're not going to, you know, tinker with stuff that they don't really, you know, that wasn't their idea. So this makes sense. But the problem is, is that it, it's treated so much like a beta. 23 is literally a, a mess that we just got handed and they were like, deal with it. And I understand because mm -hmm. I, I still stand by that 23, 24 year over year is the biggest change that we've had in NHL gameplay in a yeah. decade because of the full pressure system stuff, although it's being dialed back. But that being said, that means that we're in year one. It just scares me because by year three, if it's not a banger, it's like, ugh, like, why? You know, like, we're addicted to this game. It's it's hockey. We all have hockey. And this is the out being – a lot of people – dude, the whole reason I like I, – I love this game is because I couldn't play hockey as a kid. I think it's the one sports game where it's very difficult for everyone to want to play that or be able to play that wants to play. I didn't play hockey until I was 20. And this video game is an outlet for a lot of people that can't play hockey or even you guys that play so hockey regularly, you, you know, you don't always want to watch a game on TV or your team's not playing. You want to play it. You still want to play it. Right. So, you know, I, I, I it's not going anywhere. We're still addicted to it and it is what it is, but I, I hope we see a thing, um, you know, some, some changes over the next little while. But lastly, yeah. we've got about, you know, five, 10 minutes left. We got the new team builders, man. What a sad trombone. Like just mah, uh, mah, mah. like it's honestly, man, it's just like this year for content. It's I, I think so it was ninety. Rough. I think in this instance that it was the ninety overalls being unbelievable. They gave those cards. They messed around with the attributes to make every important attribute unreal, and then they mm -hmm. also gave them sick abilities. Like Madonna is still like probably better yeah, than Sallow, or yeah. and arguably better than ah, nash is tough i started using nash and i could see like, no and nash is like he's my first line right winger yeah I, like, like he, he's he so scores. good that i moved mcdavid to center because mm -hmm. of it yeah so but nonetheless there's only four options there's not six so obviously um you know every, that means every card is more important but man they it, the jump from the 90s from the 87s was so much higher than the 90 the 90s and the 93 to the 90s so um yeah Stu, did you you make any of them I made all of them. Yeah, I, and? I, um, I don't know. I'm maybe I'm in the minority. I, I still don't like the names of the players when they're getting released. Like Madonna should have been a higher overall, if that makes sense. Like, oh, you, you think because saying? he's like a should have showed up later. Yeah. yeah, like he's he's Mike Madonna. You know what I mean? Where you're 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 not different positions. I can see Arnett and him being swapped. That would make yeah, more sense. Yeah. Or like Sammy Sallow. I mean, you know, good player. But, you know, it's – but they're trying to find the meta builds. They're trying to increase their yep. heights. All their heights Trying to get you to spend up. money. You know, like, I don't know. Personally, personally I don't care with that. That's yeah, fine for me. Personally, I mean, I think Sal is better than a coin. And then, I like, that's how I – I think it's judge. marginally, but yes, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I think – I also think Larry Robinson is marginally better than um, Regeer. Mitchell. Yeah, I agree the thing with that. Is, the thing is with Regeer, he – yes, he has more thump because of the gold truck. The thing is, is Robinson's hands, his agility, like he just feels more, he I, feels more fluid and he can move a little yeah, better. It's not Robinson that they're not better. better. It's not that they're not better. It's that you, you have to give saying. two up, which is 750,000 coins in value. For sure. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the, that was the part. Because even Arnott's on it, the best center in the game. I, I agree. Um, before, see this, and this is the patch. Like, I'm not even kidding when I say this. It's like before the patch, I was saying, I literally think Nash is better than uh, McDavid. Then mm -hmm. the patch with the poke checking happened. I'm like, holy crap, McDavid's back, baby. And then now the patch is back, and I'm going to have to probably go back to Nash again. Do you use wheels on McDavid? I do. And it's just, but the, the getting the getting clipped, man, it's it's crazy. Like, when he gets clipped now, it's just like zaps him. And he's he's smaller. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's three inches is a lot in this game. It really is. And uh, that three inches, it sucks. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to. I mean, I got to figure out something with the patch. I mean, um, I don't know. The uh, are you are you guys good on team builders, or do you want to keep going? The, God, let the New Jersey Devil team builders die. Jesus, <laughs> like good. Well, why I, not give? I, wait, hey, why not give Arna Nashville Predators? He was the or that Oilers. Of like, I mean, but it's like you know he played for the Blues, Stars, Oilers. Reds. Right? Am I mixing him up? Oiler, no, yeah, but Oiler, it's, yeah. But my point is, is Arnott was the captain of the Preds. That would, you know, Preds have never. Here's got the, one, the, the or, thing about the thing about the selection. It's like. This year, there'll be 23 or 22 team builders total from 87 to the 99s, right? There's 32 franchises. 
not giving Vegas and Seattle one makes sense. Like I can okay with that. That means there's eight franchises that aren't getting a team builder, and you can offset that with other cards. Like let's say the Sharks don't get one that you know you gave Hurdle a fantasy card, for example, right? It's that you got 22 franchises repped. The team builder cards are always among the best and the most sought after. And regardless, they're good. Like even the 87s are still passable, even at the like, near the end of the game because they're given good like size skating and and abilities abilities carries them a lot right so like you could have new and your fourth line center and or even third line center and be completely okay still like he's sick yep. just he's a new jersey devil and it's like they use over the last two years five new jersey devil players like i don't it's funny because i used to joke i remember it's a, a little bit insider here when nicholas was the content team developer in his first year or second year, we used to talk quite a bit or back then a little bit just about content ideas and things like that. And I, I remember joking with him that like, I can tell that you loved watching hockey in the nineties because of the content that I've seen him I've come out with. And I'm like, I remember, I remember there being, uh, there was no New York Islander MSP for like two seasons. And it was like the icons he was coming out with were a lot of the same. And I'm like, man, use Zetterberg or like that's like 2010 guys. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I remember him joking, like, that makes a lot of sense. And I feel like there's somebody on the dev team that is maybe not a Devils fan, but really paid attention to that era of the Devils. Because, like, good Lord, it's like it, that. that's the thing. I don't have a hatred against the Devils, but it's like, I, well, actually, yeah, I want to see a Shark, bro. If I want to make a Sharks theme team, I get they're bad. But, like, it's impossible if you are someone that plays the game not even competitively. If you didn't want to get absolutely railroaded every time you played online, there is no way to play with sharks. There's not. A Joe Thornton car would have been fine as a '93 Dude, team. Dude, Joe builder. Thornton team builder. Like, you know, like I pray that the '96s and '99s have, th- like, Rob Blake and S- Sundin. Like, I yeah. pray because they don't have a power up icon. They're both very popular players and they're both Lind- completely lindros is another one that was the next one i was about to say is that those three if it's Stronger. not them and if it's like if you want to mess around with a like antropoff <laughs> like man he was the 99 dude i remember antropoff when i was still i still like the leafs like and i wasn't a sharks fan at all like i remember that but it's like good lord he wasn't a team builder bro he's like a barely a second line player like it was just God, that was strictly meta build. At it that was, point. yeah, and I understand that, but there's still icons that are massive that you could make meta players, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's enough of the team builders. Um, free we bars, all star and style, oh, all star worst of worst yeah. event of the year. They and chalked it. What an unfortunate yeah. thing, man. That they, that your your best card ends up being a ninety, and when on your fourth biggest event of the year, where it's like supposed to be the like the oh fun event, you know? Like sure, like. Like there, it could have been easily fixed if like it's like, what if like um a goal was a plus two, an assist was a plus one, and MVP was plus three, and like don't be afraid to let a card go to ninety six or ninety seven. That's fun. That's what people find fun in the game. It's the not, record oh, is five. Oh look, Matthews got. Yeah, Matthews. Oh, sweet, ninety Matthews in a game where ninety. If you don't have a ninety-three the in your team, 92. like they they're not going to be in your not going to be your team for very long unless you just started the game. Like, it's just, uh, they played it so huge, so huge safe. miss. It's it's but, funny. Yeah, playing it safe isn't fun. It's like nobody. Like, it's just what a what a boring event. There's like uh, if I was watching guys like getting plus two. I would be glued to the TV. I'd be glued to the market, yep. going ooh. Well, all of a sudden, this guy goes bang bang plus four you're sitting there and people are just probably just going we'd be going nuts in the market for it, these cards because it, you gotta know exactly on average like we've had now what like six years of of three on three you know exactly how 10. much people are gonna score right the record's like, five I mean, and it's only happened twice imagine, right and imagine if a guy okay sure he gets five goals he goes to 97 it's like the, who cares we've got who 99s. 99 we've got it's, 99. Feb- it's february it, that's they, that's that's cool all of a sudden like your car like, all the cards were like going into the event worth like quick sell it was funny much. is that like, like that was a like, great buying opportunity great buying opportunity because i bought every all-star card that went for the bare minimum of 87s because it's like two all i have to score is one goal and even if they right. don't i got them at the bare minimum yeah so um i agree with you that plus two for goals i think the big thing in the skills competition is 
why did you that the because they played in multiple events so every all-star that got selected of the 12 had to play in four of the first six events minimum even if they were eliminated they played in four so they didn't want to give them multiple chances to win multiple events and get 99 attributes of the oh no right dude oh, like, no. like man let it go in february oh wow oh no mcdavid sure, they, wins they're... the fastest skater he goes from 97 speed to 99 it's like you know, like the the passing one, I I uh, I actually can't remember who won all of the individual. I think Pasternak won, the, or Makar might have, and he gets ninety nine passing and puck control. It's like that should have been the thing because the skills competition now you've got guys that could have had ninety nine attributes and like let's say you won fastest skater and hardest shot. Now you've got ninety nine slap shot and ninety nine speed and accuracy. Sick, like just fun, and they went safe, and it was like man, and the master set players worst selection. I get what they were doing. And I can respect that they they went with the the year two thousand Toronto event, but it highlights an issue where they keep making master set player items for power up icons and like that's there's already a they got a card they only there there used to be seventy power up icons now there's only thirty, so it's like you know you ah just yeah not another set and no centers. <laughs> God, they hate the center position. They, <laughs> they hate it. It must be illegal in there to be like, hey, MSP, that's a good center. They're like, no, 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 no. We, what we need is another right winger with mid speed. And, and, go, and oh, 60 yeah, speeds. That's a great idea. And 60 face off. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, do anything else on the All Star event? Like that? I event? mean, I think, I don't remember if the last episode, it's been a few, the, but the Chara, I don't know if we went over that. It's just another. It wasn't camp. as, dude, the Chara yeah, wasn't did. as. Oh, no, it did because it was released. Like there was a three, it was yeah. uh, two weeks. Sorry. So, um, I, I don't know that the Garen and the those kind of cards. They were the I best know, cards of the whole event. He, yeah, yeah, Heatley, Daze, and Heatley, their, uh, Gardner. Yeah, like those kind of guys. I mean, those, I, are, I those, know. those are those are good plug-in. Like everyone's yeah. buzzing about that. Like, ooh, four cards. It was the first time I almost team. spent money. Like yeah, I wanted. No, yeah. it, I know you're saying you, is like if they make me want to spend money, then they're doing their job. That's what they, I agree. They, with, yes. I will give them credit. Those were yeah. like those were a good choice. Like the Heatley card, everyone's like, oh. Mr. 50 should have been an MSP. That guy should have been an MSP. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know you were uh, a little bummed about that MSP, but sleazy, because it was, it was probably, sh it, like you said, it probably should have been an MSP. It's just, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was just a weird, it was a weird event. I, I might actually, I honestly, God, not even run McDavid this weekend and like buy that Daze, buy that heater. You're nuts. And just go like, and just lean into the big boys because it's, I, I want to see if they can rock Daze off the puck. If you can rock Daze off the puck, I'll just throw my arms up and say, okay, I'm just going to run a bunch of, you know, small guys. But anyways, the, uh, the style icons event started this past week. Um, I'm besides the MSPs real quick. I'm a little confused because today we're doing this on Tuesday, the sixth. Um, I'm a little confused. I don't want to call it like late, late. <laughs> Sounds bad. Why, why are we doing the same MSPs in, uh, player item form you know what oh I'm you like, mean the yo dude that was a little much the the flashback bars out i am i'm completely cool, cool with that's yeah fine. with that's the fine. flashback msps every once in a while and also that bars out mm -hmm. is sick but r.i.p mm -hmm. to any fantasy owner bars out that sucks but um for the majority of people like that's a sick card i agree that the the redoing of the past style icon that you literally just went and did here is eight cards all from that were used to be msps like yeah, like it's. Just, I don't. Okay, the Barzal I can let Ryan, fly. Ryan like Whitney's the... disgusting. Like he's, well, he's nasty. Stewie, were you gonna say lazy? Were you gonna say that was lazy? Yeah, it's it a was little. Fun. It was. It was lazy. It was a little lazy. It was. Yeah. It was lazy. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to be nice about it, but it's. It was just a little odd. Like I'm just. You know. I don't know. I. I just, especially like when the week before they did like the the Rupe Hints, and I was like, oh cool, like Rupe Hints, like he's one of like the best players the dallas stars and he's fast and i go look at his speed and i'm like oh well i can't use rupe hence i guess you know it's it's just like one of those things it's like 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 brent said like we're in february now why can't i use a rupe hence you know like i don't know it's rupe hence is actually one of the fastest players in the damn league yeah he's six threes on horse but the good thing for the boys here is we got our Sveshnikov. And he is nasty. Like Custom that tried card. Yeah. If there is a card that you guys out there need to go make, 
It's a special. I love that, dude. I'm not the one having to do the content. Yeah, Yeah, let's go. Oh, look, I'm being positive for the people out there that say, you know, the worst person. I agree. I also like Svechikov as one. That's a good one. Also, okay. Custom stride, six foot two. The only issue is, like, if you had Nash and McDavid's team of the year in a wing. Yeah, I do, but I think he's actually better than Nash. You're so crazy, though. It makes me laugh. Yo, uh, also get props. They finally did a variant card that's actually worth. If you are a Caulfield fan, yeah, yeah like yeah. that, like the very cool. Carter, I like the idea of because if you're a like if you are a mm-hmm. diehard Canadian fan and you want to like like flex, but like dude, like in the prior events, dude, remember the captains one and they literally changed like yeah. the, the tiniest little bar. It's like look at that's this a scam. Outline. That's a Instead scam. Instead of a blue outline, you get no red. the the, the blue leaf to the red leaf <laughs> on Cujo. Like it's just like the coffee one is how it should be for ea those are cool if you want to do variants it's got to be a different card so we can actually tell the difference i i like that the coffee one is kind of cool um yeah oh and then like the transaction who's manco card because of how progression works is like low-key better than the msp which i thought was kind of funny <laughs> I mm-hmm. that they, was they good. need in summertime get back to the drawing board they need a whole they need ea hawk to sit there and it was dude it, right, it's it's, it's much here. like on the fantasy cards and the progression overall off because like it, dude here's an example the uh barzell fantasy we already gone over fantasy issues how sick to your stomach do you have to be because if you still had the fantasy barzell how sick to your stomach that thing was worth a million the other day and what's it go have, for right now and then you have this come out and it's like oh all right <laughs> Because like, he still got to ninety nine, it didn't ruin it like it, entirely. But like, yeah, like the the. But the problem is he has ninety nine speed, right? So, so it's like, oh, that's a lot of the value of like it's like okay, I don't need to go above ninety three kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yep. So I mean, uh, your opportunity yeah. cost is is like insane. It's like okay, well, I need to and get you're like taking all the risk. Little... It's mm-hmm. uh, it's currently on the market. Barzell's fantasy card for low as it can be is nine fifty. Oh, okay. okay, I guess it didn't it didn't get hit that hard then. I don't know if it's actually surprising. That. That's the problem. That's, that's yeah. true. That's true. So, well, yeah. now everyone's gonna have bars out, so like it will drop. You, yeah. Those people are probably just gonna hold though. The, the ones the that best have fantasy it. cards, honestly, mm-hmm. to build now because they're so obscure are the junior players, like Bomb. Said stuff. every year, bro. I said every year, like because they, now, they especially dominate. if they keep with this weird thing that they're doing with the progression, I hope they don't do that again next year. It's like, why would you ever build Dowdy? You can get his X Factor. Why would you, you know? JT Miller, I, you can just Rasmus get, like, Anderson's X Factor low key might be good. Like, yeah, silver the, truculence. The only and, way it makes sense if they just basically ramp from 90 to 99 super quick, then they won't give, they clearly, the bonk thing, they won't give him a card now that he's a 99. Doughty's he not getting a card. Doughty's not no, getting Doughty a, won't. a team of the week no. card. He could score 10 points in four games, and they are going to find a way that they're going to give him the McKinnon treatment where he is just forgotten about because they can't, mm-hmm. they back themselves in a quarter. They can't. They can't do anything with that. Like, it's it's just funny to me. Like that's, and again, this kind of falls into what we were talking about earlier. Is that just like it's stuff? They're trying new stuff. It didn't hit, and they gotta go back. And yeah, you know right. that is what it is. So let's end it there, fellas. That's a long episode. That was a good episode. We we touched on quite a bit there, and uh, minimal compl- No, still quite a bit of complaining. But hey, that's what you get on this channel. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone, we'll be back next week uh, before I go to New York. We will have a podcast before I go to New York, so which is next Thursday. So uh, thank you guys again for listening, and uh, have a good one, fellas.